Hey guys, Cassie, Deputy with the Deputy Tribe, and today I want to talk to you guys about a question that I got regarding the McGuffey readers. So let's talk about that right after this. Welcome back to Deputy Tribe. If you're new here, I'm Cassie Deputy, and I am a home educating mom to eight kids. And most recently, we have become known as the McGuffey family because we use the McGuffey readers. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with the McGuffey readers, this video is not going to go through a history. Um, this video is going to compare this version of McGuffey with this version of McGuffey's. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the differences between the two and then show you some examples of what I'm talking about within the text. About last year, did a lot of research on um, the history of the McGuffeys and how they were used and how they were changed and who McGuffey was and, and things like that. Um, so if you want to grab this book, um, this does a really good job at just explaining a brief overview of everything. I'll include the link down below. But I just wanted to highlight um, a few things out of this book regarding the topic of the difference between the two McGuffeys. So these McGuffeys were written in um, 1837 and the other McGuffeys were written from the 1836 and 37 edition, which is this one. So these were the originals. And then the version of 1879, which is the other version. Um, so these were America's most popular school books, if you're not familiar. Um, and I kind of wanted to open this up by explaining the importance of giving our children a godly worldview, um, because a child's worldview is established when they're really young. Um, they say within the first five years to, you know, 10 or eight, eight or 10 years in your home. Um, and your worldview really is how you interpret meaning in life, how you in like where your hopes are, um, where your fr frustrations are in life, um, your sense of observation, what you like, what you don't like. Everything is filtered through your worldview. Um, now, the McGuffey's. This book states it very nice. It says, a worldview is a person's systematic and comprehensive concept of his or her world. A worldview provides a meaningful framework for discussion of the perspective out of which a person answers questions about life. In the McGuffey's readers, these original readers here, the natural categories for description are God, the natural world, and humankind. So these books are extremely, extremely evangelistic. Um, McGuffey's heart was to really portray um, the Bible as the authority of God's word and to give children a um, proper mindset in relation to themselves and God and our world and God. Um, every reader who reads these books will find their dominant concern for the character of nature and God and his relationships with people. Um, McGuffey focuses a lot on children thinking about their life after death, thinking about how their actions um, affect those around them, um, but primarily God, always a center on being God-focused. Um, when McGuffey wrote these books, he... Um, believed that the most important book to be read was the Bible 
and he wanted to teach children how to read so that they could read the Bible and know who God was. And that was his primary goal in life. Um, you can see this in the content of everything that he's put in there. Um, he not only includes many lessons about the Bible, but he also uses materials taken directly from the Old and New Testament throughout all of his original um, readers. Um, I have a lot of notes about all the different things that he teaches, but I don't think that's the most important. I think what the most important for you guys to understand is there are very few lessons that are in these original McGuffeys that made it into the 1978 McGuffeys. Um, the theistic worldview that was so dominant in these editions slowly disappears and God is mentioned more and more and more rarely. Um, the goal in writing the second set of McGuffeys was actually to make them more acceptable in a secular school. So you see more themes such as the spirit of self-reliance, individualism, and competition in the older or the newer versions of the McGuffeys, where um, you see a lot more virtue in these, such as piety and love and contentment and salvation. Salvation is probably the number one. Um, salvation and righteousness are the number one top things talked about in these McGuffeys over and over and over in a million different ways. That's the main uh, theme that you're going to get. God is mentioned in almost every single story. And then you notice in the older ones, God is very rarely mentioned. Um, even the depth of moral morality that is taught is watered down and weakened and replaced with this more of a secular, um, apart from God type of morality, which doesn't really work if you don't have the Bible and God at its core. Um, responsibility for success or failure lies within the individual in the older, in the newer McGuffeys. Um, in the older McGuffeys, we know that um, it is God who is sovereign. It is God who is in control of everything. And God wants us to be good stewards of what he's given us because everything is his. And ultimately, he is in charge of the outcome. Um, where the newer McGuffeys teach more that it's in your control. Um, no matter how bad life may appear, persons should be satisfied with their lot and not be distressed over any present social, political, or economic arrangements. Um uh, but still the affluent should use their wealth in socially responsible ways. They don't have a lot of stories about rebels, reformers, pilgrims, um, these types of things that are so rich in the original McGuffeys. They shy a, a, a little bit, a lot more away from doing anything to upset society um, instead of you stand for God and you do what is right. The fourth reader in the newer versions does include God a lot more, but um, it speaks, however, um, a gospel of success instead of a gospel of Jesus Christ dying on the cross and how our sin separates us from him and how we really need to be conscious of our flesh and um, have the Holy Spirit help us to walk in the Spirit. So now that I kind of gave you a brief um, description of the two, let's go ahead and compare them. So I'm going to walk you through um, the first readers and uh, kind of show you what I'm talking about. And then I will show you how they compare to the original readers. So let's take a look at that. Okay, guys. So here is, um, this is archive.org where you can get all the McGuffeys for free. So I went through and just snapshotted some random pictures of the eclectic readers, the revised editions. Um, so we're just going to kind of compare a few of these stories to a few of the originals. Um, so here you see in Lesson 9, Ned is on the box. He has a pen in his hand, big rat, nothing really, anything of substance. Um, we get a little bit further, talking about the sun setting, jumping, don't touch the nest, um, teaching kids about that. Bees and Robert are very happy. Papa and Mama have gone into the woods with them. So basically just fun, short story type stuff. Bess has a little bed for her dog. Jip is with them. Robert will make him draw Bess. So nothing really of substance. Whoops. Um, they hoist up the flag. 
you might spoil my flag, then we will all join to pay you for it, but we will not spoil it, Papa. Oh, thank you, hurrah for the flag, boy. So, you know, patriotism, but no God. Lucy has a pet. Do you know what kind of pet it is? It's a bird. Polly wants a cracker, something about the cat, but nothing really of substance. Um, here, I told you not to put the doll up there. Another thing that I noticed is the kids tend to fight with each other a little bit more in this um, second read or in the second edition here. So let's go ahead and jump back to the original book and compare the two. Okay, so let's compare that now to the original McGuffey. So I picked out um, some of the same numbers, stories that I showed you, um, and just some other random ones. So here is how it compares. The poor old man. Here we have a poor old man at the door. He asks for something to eat. We'll give it to him. He's cold. What can you give him? Some things that I can give him. It is God, my child. He makes the sun to shine and sends the rain on the earth. So every single story, God makes the little lambs bring forth wool that we may have clothes to keep us warm. Everything is always pointed back to God every single time. So here we'll jump to little Henry. Well, little Henry, have you read your new book? I read of three boys who went to school. Okay, so here we talk about um, aunt says no one but a bad girl who will tear or soil a book. So it's talking about respecting property and being gentle with books and caring for them. Um, let's go here. Here we have a lesson about the moon. And so it's kind of talking about it will not be seen until after you are in bed. Now, granted, this is the first reader, so it's really simple. Um, after that, there will be a new moon, talking about the moon phases. When there is snow on the ground and the moon shines, it's almost as bright as day. So you can just see there's a lot deeper content in, in the first readers. Um, here's a, a story about a very cruel boy who learns his lesson um, to not be mean to animals. He felt sorry that he heard this young friend tell him how bad he acted and I hope that he will not do so anymore. So we have a lot more morality in this one. Here's some good advice. If you have done anything during the day that is wrong, ask forgiveness of God and your parents. Remember that you should learn some good things every day. If you have learned nothing all day, then that day is lost. So really, really, really dense at a uh, very young level um, and a lot of good deep topics to talk about. So let's compare book two. All right, guys, let's compare the second book. So again, I just took random pictures of pages. Here in lesson seven, we have a poem about a fly and a spider. Um, one day a man gave him a dollar for finding a pocketbook. He could have kept all the money, but his mother taught him to be honest and it didn't belong to him. So he went back and gave her the money. She said, Dear boy Henry, I don't know how you could earn to buy bread with, but now I think we can manage to get along well. Henry worked all the day and went to school in the evening. He earned almost enough to support his mother and his little sister. So again, the not that it's bad to teach industrialism, but you'll notice that these books are overwhelmingly, like that's the gospel that they preach. So we have another poem. Here we have a story about a blind man begging for food. Um, and Henry saw Harry throw the sense over the hedge. Um, which boy do you think was kind? So comparing the one that said he spent all his money and the other boy who shared his money. But again, no mention of God or the Bible. Um, here we have what the leaf said, and it's a cute little story, but no pointing back to God or Jesus. Um, she looked as if no thought of ill in all her life had stirred her, but when she moves with careful thread and she spins her silken thread, she is planning, planning still the way to do some murder. So here, I think this is a poem about a spider, if I remember correctly. Um, but again, no mention of God. So you can just kind of see through the stories here. They're not very deep. They're fun, they're playful, 
And there's a couple good lessons in there, but um, nothing very uh, meaty. So let's compare this to the original. All right, so let's compare this to the second McGuffey. And as I'm doing this, I'm pulling my kids' bookmarks out. So um, let's see. I think I just picked some random stories in here. Let's see. Here we have, I don't know what story this is. Let's see. About the, no, not about the beaver. About the moon. So here we have a whole thing about the moon. I mean, we do have a story about the beaver too, but... As you can see, it talks all about the moon, um, but of course it ends, I hope they will look up and give thanks to him who has sent them the pleasures of the summer moonlight evening. So how God made the moon and its purpose is for our benefit and his glory and our pleasure. Um, let's see, here we have about the stars. I guess I picked all the science ones. But it's talking about uh, the creator. I think they are God's candles, said the boy. They indeed seem like lamps set in the glorious hall of the creator. So a very, 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 very strong, obvious focus on how God is the center to not only all creation, but all life. Um, there, there we may study the stars and learn all the glorious things that he has done. All right, let's skip to way back here. How the world was made. So an entire story about how God wanted light. He said there was light. After that, he made everything. Let me see if I can just find another story that's not science-y. Let's just turn to this. The points of a compass. So it's talking all about a compass. The father and the um, dad having great conversation about observing where the sun rises, where it sets. Um how it's called the north and the west. Um, in the same manner, if you were the sun sets, turn to your right hands toward that place and the part of the sky opposite to you will be the south. So very educational, very deep. So, I mean, not everything needs to point to God, but you can definitely see a difference in the content. So lastly, I would like to compare book number three. So lastly, I would like to compare book number three of the McGuffey's. So here we have a story about the boy who cried wolf, which is a great story. Um, not a lot about God. Beautiful hands. Oh, Miss Roberts with coarse looking hands. Mary Jessup has. Um, feel free to pause these slides and read through them too. It talks about the good deeds that she's doing, which is great. Um, the meaning of this fable is that a person playing a double part may sometimes escape danger. But he is always, like the bat, a creature that is distinguishing to everybody and shunned by all. So a good lesson, um, this doesn't relate to this previous story, by the way. But again, it's not drawing you back to Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross, the Bible, the same way that the, um, new, the older versions do. So here we have a poem. Here we have a story about kindness of two boys. Perhaps some may say that these are little things. So they are. But we must not wait for occasions to do great things. We must begin with little labors of love. So a focus on what we can do instead of what God is doing or God wants to do. Just so it is with conscience, if we will obey its voice, even in the most trifling things, we can always hear it clear and strong. So conscience talks to us, not the Holy Spirit, not God in these books. No crowns for me. Uh, feel free to pause this if you would like to read it. Here is um, the rest of the story. Um, so this last one says, Susan, said her grandmother, I knew it all the time, but I let you go out hoping that your own conscience would tell you of your sin. I am so glad that you have confessed your fault and your sorrow. When shall I be your own little girl again? Now was the quick reply, and Susan grandmother kissed her forehead. So this is about the closest I could find just paging through at something that sort of mentioned the gospel. All right, so finally, I want to compare the third book. Um, now this one, I just picked it up right where my girls are, and the first lesson is all about speaking the truth. So about how deceit is acquired as a part of your character. Um, I mean, this book's pretty deep. This book is pretty deep. You will see the throne of God. How bright, how glorious will it burst upon your sight. 
you will see God, the Savior, seated upon the majestic throne. Angels in number, more than can be counted, will fill the universe with their glittering wings and the rapturous songs. Oh, what a scene to behold. Then you will stand in the presence of the countless throng to answer for everything you have done while you lived. Okay, this is how this one teaches that you um, should always speak the truth. It literally reminds you about our God and our relationship with to our God. So the next one is the advantages of reading. And this is how it starts. It is the glory of man that the creator has made him capable to endless improvement in knowledge, virtue, and happiness. It is the high privilege of those who dwell in this favored land that they enjoy in rich abundance the means of such improvement. Among these means, books hold a prominent place. They are indeed for our principal instruction and perhaps do more in the formation of our intellect and moral habits than all other means combined. So then they go on to talk about, um, there's one book in particular that we should be spending most of our time studying and that would be the Word of God. Okay, I mean, it's amazing, this. I, I mean, this is what I would want to teach my kids. I don't know about you, but this is the content I want them to be thinking on. Solomon's wise choice goes through the book of Solomon. So this was just opening it to where my kids left off. So I hope this gives you a comprehensive understanding of why I prefer these McGuffies and I would push everyone towards these McGuffies over the other ones. I really believe that the second set of McGuffies got corrupted somewhere along the line and it wasn't the original. Like McGuffy never signed off on any of the things in those books. Hardly any of the original stories made it over and the content definitely did. It teaches a gospel of success and not a gospel of Jesus Christ. Its emphasis is not on the Bible and God and um, biblical morality, but instead on uh, the gospel of success and patriotism, which isn't bad, but not the gospel of patriotism is bad. And um, yeah, so I hope that really helps clears things up. Thank you guys for asking questions and leaving comments. Please give this video a thumbs up and support our channel. Share this video with people that you know that are asking these questions. Um, and then don't forget to hit subscribe. And always remember that Jesus is coming. Thanks, guys.